Hi folks and welcome to the 10th video in my Getting Started series for the game B17 Flying Fortress The Mighty Eighth. Now in this video we're going to go through quick start mission number one which is called Limping Home. And so to play that mission we're going to click on the new game panel in the top left and then the continue switch in the lower right. And then the quick start missions can be accessed by clicking on the upper right panel here, choose a quick start mission and then the continue switch in the lower right and we're going to play here quick start mission number one, limping home. As it says here, you are flying a B-17 as part of the low element of your squadron on a mission to Berlin. Over the target you were hit by flak, damaging you quite badly. Limping home, you were savaged by a group of 109s who were driven away by your faithful fighter escort. And you made it home to Deanthorpe Air Base and are just performing the flight check for landing when you notice that your undercarriage has been badly shot up. You now have to plan and execute the landing. So just a couple of like minor points here. First of all, Dean Thorpe here is actually spelled incorrectly. It should be D-E-E-N-E -E -E for Dean Thorpe. Um, and when you actually play this mission, you are actually flying back to Ridgewell Air Base, not Dean Thorpe Air Base. So just a couple of corrections there anyway. So anyway, let's get cracking and uh, let's get into the mission. So we'll click on the play selected mission switch here in the lower right. So I'm just going to pause the quick start mission there. Just I just want to take a few moments to take stock of this scenario and show you exactly the conditions that you've been thrown into. So first of all, let's have a look at the exterior view by pressing the F2 key. And we can see that we've been, we really have been badly mauled here. We've got a gaping hole in the tail and most of the wings and control surfaces have been hit or uh, have holes almost all the way through them. And that means that the B-17 is going to handle quite badly uh, because of that. Another contributing factor to the B-17 handling badly is the fact that we're down to two engines and we've lost engine one and engine three. Uh, unfortunately, they've both been feathered and we're only running on engine two on the port side and engine four on the starboard side. But unfortunately, the power distribution is mismatched because one is an inboard engine and the other is an outboard engine. So relatively speaking, between the port and starboard sides, the power distribution is mismatched uh, along those wings. And that means that we're going to have a yaw effect, which is going to draw the B-17 off to the left. So that's going, to another be, that's going to be another bad handling characteristic in this scenario. And the way to counter that normally would be if this had occurred to you over enemy territory, um, that you would apply trim to the plane to counter uh, the effect of uh, this damage. Now normally, when you're flying the normal missions, if you're this badly damaged, it's very, very likely that the AI will have lost control. The AI can only handle uh, stable flight when you've got pretty minimal damage on your B-17. When it's like this, uh, the chances are the B-17 will have started to spiral out of control. In that circumstance, you will have to take manual control. And my recommendation is that you then apply trim as necessary to get as stable a flight as you can. That really is your only chance of being able to limp home, as this scenario is called, with that B-17 in manual control. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting it all the way. And I often find that if you don't apply trim and you control the B-17 using your joystick, it will just start to uh, spiral out of control itself. So trim really is your friend in those circumstances. So when I do start this mission up, back up, that'll be one of the first things I do. I'll run through trimming this B-17. Uh, the next thing, let's have a look inside and see what the uh, damage is inside the B-17. So I'm going to press F1 and then I'm going to switch off the overlay by holding down control and tapping H and then let's have a look at the crew. And we can see that we've got three crew members that are requiring first aid. We've got our bombardier Paul Whitley, we've got our engineer Sean Shantz, and we've got one of our waste gunners, Mark Fish. We've also got four crew members, or I should say, yeah, four crew members who are in a state of panic at the moment. Now, in this scenario, you don't need to apply first aid to succeed in this scenario, but obviously if you're flying a real mission, it's in your best interest to administer first aid as soon as possible. So 
I will run through applying first aid after I've applied trim to the B17. Obviously your first uh, port of call should be to get stable flight first of all, then administer the first aid and then we can focus on landing the B17 safely. So because the engineer is out and the engineer would normally be used for cranking down any uh, damaged uh, undercarriage, uh, we've already been told the undercarriage is damaged in this scenario, but because we can't use the engineer, I'm going to use a radio operator to do that. So I'm going to use other crew members to administer the first aid. I'm not going to use the pilot or co-pilot to administer first aid. They should be your last port of call for ever administering first aid. You really want to keep those two guys in their seats. One of them may go down injured. Um, the last thing you want to do is that be the only guy you've got in the cockpit. So really only use those guys for first aid in extreme circumstances. So uh, I think that's about everything I want to cover with the state of play of this scenario, but let's have a quick look at some of the lovely graphical touches that the developers uh, have set up on the graphics here to illustrate damage to the interior of the B-17. So let's just go to the compartment view. Let's have a look in the nose. And we can see the superb modeling, uh, superb illustration of the fire in the nose compartment here. The bombardier's instrumentation or instrument panel has completely burnt out. And if we go to the navigator, and click I to go to the instrument view and then escape to go to his desk. We can see that they've uh, shown the fire damage uh, extending all the way over his desk, which is pretty neat. Uh, next, let's go back to the compartment view by pressing C. Uh, let's have a look at the radio room. So we've got some fuselage damage shown in here, which is pretty cool. Go to the uh, waste gunners, we've got some damage here from shrapnel, bullets and shells very likely. And also the tail gunner, some severe damage back here as well. So that's one of the great things about this game is they do show varying states of damage internally as well as externally. And that's really, uh, really neat. Okay, so let's get on with this quick start mission. So first of all, I'm going to go to the external view by pressing the F2 key. And before I, uh, unpause the simulation, I'm actually going to preset my joystick throttle control to around the three quarter mark. And that's about the same setting that the AI currently has it set at. So now I'm going to hit pause and then M on my keyboard to go into manual mode. And then I need to quickly apply my trim. So I'm going to hold down shift and tap home five times to add some negative elevator trim. And I'm going to apply full right hand rudder trim by holding down shift and holding down the page up key. And if you watch the rudder there, you can see that that has now moved off fully to the right. And I'm going to hold, hold. I'm going to apply a little bit of left aileron trim by holding down Shift and tapping Delete twice. Now we're drifting off to the left a lot, so I'm now just going to not only stabilize our flight but turn back to recover a little bit of the heading we had before. And you can just about make out the landing strips at the airfield over there. So I'm just going to get us kind of heading back in that direction. I'm actually just going to bring the overlay back up by holding down control and tapping H because that overlay is really useful. So now it's time. Now we've just got about enough time to go and uh, administer first aid to everyone. So I'm going to slow the simulation down to an eighth and I highly recommend you do this because when you head back inside don't forget the AI takes over control of flying the plane and it really does some wonky things um, when the plane is as mauled and beaten up as this. So I've slowed it down, I'm going to press F1 to go inside and then we're going to quickly administer first aid. So I'm going to left click on the waste gunner there, right click on him there, left click and left click on Mark Fish who's the waste gunner down here. So now I'm going to right click on the ball turret gunner who looks like he's just sitting on the floor and then left click and then left click on the engineer and then we're going to go to the nose compartment right click on the navigator and then left click and then left click on the bombardier. So that's everybody um, who needs to be told to go and administer first aid have been given their instructions. 
So we'll head back outside, F2, M to go into manual mode, and now I'll speed time back up. So at no time was the AI flying the plane there, which is what you want to try and achieve. So now we need to check the landing gear. So I'm going to lower the landing gear by holding down the shift key and tapping the up arrow on the keyboard. And we can see that only one wheel is coming down. So we do need to have somebody manually crank the other wheels down. So again, I'm going to slow down the simulation to 1 8 and head back inside, F1. And we're going to go to the radio operator. I'm going to left click on the radio operator there, right click on him, left click there, left click there, left click there. And now I can left click on the undercarriage crank to tell the radio operator to go and manually crank down the other wheels. So we'll press F2 to go back outside, M to go into manual mode, and we'll speed the simulation back up. So again, at no point did the AI have any significant time period to mess up our flight. So we're still looking good. So we should see those wheels coming down. Now, we're actually down to about 1800 feet and I would have normally put the throttle up to about 100% once we'd reached about 2500 feet. But because I'm talking so much during this, I kind of lost the plot a little bit, but we should still be okay. We've got about 1400 feet. I'm actually just pulling back on the joystick slightly just to recover from that slight error. And I'm now just trying to get us lined up on that runway there. So again, I'm just using my joystick to do some minor adjustments. So now I've let go of the joystick and I think we're fairly well lined up. I'm going to pull back a little to reduce our rate of descent. So the landing gear is more or less down. I'm going to hit T to lock the tail wheel. And now I'm going to lower the flaps or deploy the flaps by holding down the shift key and tapping F. I'm just going to throttle back a bit. We're well past the waypoint. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit high. I'm just going to let us descend fairly quickly here. Again, I'm now just pulling gently back on the joystick and a little bit of a left stick movement there. Now back to the right. Coming in a bit faster, throttled off a little bit more. Back on the joystick gently. There, throttle off. Now control backspace to eliminate our trim settings. So we're back to neutral trim. So now I can control the rudder to steer us. Well, I should have actually done shift T to release the tail wheel first. There we go. But now I can uh, raise the flaps or retract the flaps. So that's just uh, by pressing the F key. There we go. So now I'm just going to press P to apply the parking brake and that should be us set. Yeah, excellent. So we'll just click on the mission debriefing. As it says here, congratulations, your actions have resulted in a successful landing back at base. At this moment, your wounded crew are receiving medical attention and your damage bomber is being cleared from the field, ready to be repaired or scrapped. So that's it folks, that's the end of this mission. I hope that's been useful for you. If you've got any comments, please let me know in the section below. Uh, please click on the like, thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Again, I've got more of these uh, tutorial videos coming up. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Thanks very much, take care, bye bye.